Here I've got a uh, quite an uncommon camera. It's a Kodak Retinet. It's a Retinet 2, so it's one of the earlier models. And um, this one's come here for service, of course. Everything comes here for service sooner or later, it seems. So this one, what are its faults? Well, it's got a good selection of Zeiss bumps on the back, so the leatherettes have suffered a bit from corrosion underneath, I would say. The leatherettes on the front show signs of lifting, certainly lifting here. So the leatherettes are going to have to come off in order to uh, work on this. What else do I know about it? Well, the shutter works. It's um, somewhat sluggish, but it certainly works. That was on a half a second, and that was probably twice as half the speed it should have been, but that's, that's okay. This camera is unusual for a Retinet. This one and the uh, Retinet 2B have a frame counter similar to the Retina cameras. And you'll see that on the top plate there. All the other Retinets have a plastic dial underneath the cover at the end. So this camera has a cocking rack arrangement. And that cocking rack, of course, is vulnerable as all the cocking racks are of the 3C series. Um, and parts, of course, are pretty much impossible to find. So I'm just going to open this one up for service now, and I'll start at the top of the camera. Starting here, I'll just put something through the forks of the rewind, take the knob off, it just unscrews with my fingers. A single screw at the end of the top housing at that end. Two screws on the top housing here. I noticed that there's a lot of scratch marks around those screw heads. Uh, there's no obvious reason why somebody should be wave making scratches there. So I imagine that somebody has been in before and perhaps they had Parkinson's and their hand was darting all over the place with a screwdriver. So under the top cover. Well, it's pretty uniformly filthy under there. Um, lots of dirt and dust. Some of that detritus. Oh, we'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say that it's household dust, not insect nests. We've had enough of insect nests. All right, so lift off the film release button and its spring. I'll lift off the shutter release button. It's quite unusual, this cocking rack here. You can see it's a a pressed construction. Uh, it's trapped into the action under here and of course it's just held on the top there. So I'm hoping that the teeth on this rack are in good condition. They, they look okay at the moment. Um, certainly they're good enough to cock the camera. Let's hope it remains that way. So I'll start stripping this down I think. So I'll start by removing the strap lugs at both ends of the camera. And they can go into the degreaser and then into the ultrasonic cleaner. That was just a shim washer there. Is this chrome trimming going to lift off for me nicely? Or is it going to fight? No, that's coming off. It can be cleaned. I'll take the rewind knob, rewind shaft assembly off. I notice that those screws are loose. That's probably just as well that's coming off. What's this bit of filth? Bit of fluff there, I don't think it's anything particularly suspicious. I don't know if we can lift the rack off directly or not. It's a long time since I serviced one of these. Yes, you can. You can rotate it, and you can see this 
the shape of that rack. It's got a little tang on the bottom that connects up to the sliding section here, which and that sliding section cocks the shutter in much the same fashion as I'm just trying to think which models do that. One the retinets, certainly the one A's and so forth. So that's a brass rack. It's been chemically blackened, I think. Um, the retinas typically had brass racks as well. It certainly appears that the teeth are in good condition as far as I can tell and certainly good enough for our purposes because I doubt very much whether this camera is going to be thrashed to death. I'll need to find the correct screwdriver to unscrew this piece here. I'll go and do that now and it'll give me an opportunity to change this camera battery because it's grizzling. Okay, back with the correct screwdriver. It was tight. Most of these film advanced components are the same or very similar to those used on the retina cameras. I would say from the look of this camera it hasn't been serviced in a number of years. Of course that's not at all uncommon. Unhook that spring if I can. Oh, it's playing hard to get. All right, take it off with the screw. It's been some years since I've been called on to uh, service one of this model. As I said, they're quite uncommon. Right. Now the shutter release shaft lift out. Yes, it's got a spring on the end of it. Will that lift up through the hole? Mm, perhaps. Oh, the spring's mutilated. Someone's had that out and they've managed to um, mutilate the screw. So yes, it's been... This, the shaft was pushed through the side of the spring like this instead of running down the center of it. That's why it was reluctant to move. It's probably very reluctant to um, work correctly, that thing, I would imagine. So I'll just remove the screw and spring from the top of the release lever, or the release, top of the release lever shaft, and I will remove the circlip and spring from the top of the lock lever. The lock lever locks the film advance when the end of the film has been reached. Or at least it locks the film advance when the counter suggests that the end of the film has been reached. That's very much dependent on you setting the counter correctly. So we'll lift off that piece of leather it. I'm looking at the state of that. That's not just the original adhesive, so someone has serviced the camera before. Those screws are quite tight. Uh, mostly the reluctance to move there is because of the build-up of glue on the heads of those screws effectively locking them in place. I'm 
these are the screws for the back catch release cover one of them is pretty reluctant to move how oh, it's coming now they're quite small those screws the chrome brass quite easily damaged and that I'm checking that the return spring there that's okay it's a bit sticky in there I don't think any I was wondering whether it had been somebody helped hold it in place with a bit of glue from the looks of that perhaps not the leatherette let's have a go at this well it's coming off okay at least it's at that end of the camera The scalpel blade doesn't normally look like that, it's just had the tip snapped off when I've been doing something I shouldn't have been doing with it and I haven't got around to replacing it yet. So you can see there's a bit of adhesive on that leatherette and on the base of the camera. There is, um, I would have said, at least two different adhesives on there, possibly three. Uh, doubtless they're all incompatible so it's a wonder the leatherette stuck as well as it did the uh, chrome trim on the base of the camera has to come off The screws are reluctant to come away, um, mostly I would say because of the large amount of glue on them. Sometimes it's dif difficult to even find the screws, even if you know that they are there just because they're so well hidden under that glue layer it's three from that end one here and one here that should be enough and the chrome trim comes off I'll have to do a fair bit of cleaning on that to get it clean I would say I'll remove the lock lever the release lever and I'll remove the spring from the release lever because it's easily damaged and easily lost What else do we need? Oh, it's the tripod socket. The tripod sockets on retinas and retinettes is very often loose. Uh, this one is not. In fact, this one is very tight. So tight that if it wants to stay there, I'm going to let it stay there. That's fine with me. Oh. Right, we're in business. Oh, I can see that rewind button is well coated with glue too, so it means that whoever was applying the leatherettes had them nice and wet when they were putting them back on. Remove the screw from the spro sprocket shaft. That was a little bit loose. And take the sprocket shaft out and the sprocket. 
at the base of the camera. You know, there's our clutch, the, the guide for the film advance shaft and our clutch assembly. At the base of the camera, I want to unhook that spring for the um, rewind button catch. Oh, that screw was very tight. Uh, I think that a bit of corrosion was helping lock that in place. And the shaft is held in with three screws, which are often loose. But in this case, they are not. If they are loose, you'll feel some wobble in the film advance lever. Unfortunately, that's not the only thing that can cause wobble in the film advance lever. If this cam on the end of this shaft is loose, it's only riveted on. If that's loose, it will also cause the lever to wobble and it can cause problems with uh, the resetting so that when you press your, put your finger on the shutter and release the shutter, the film advance should be unlocked to allow you to wind on to the next shot and that should happen automatically at the same time. If that cam is wobbling around on the shaft, then it will happen the film advance will unlock at a random position relative to the shutter and you might find that you're forever having to press the film release button after you've taken a shot in order to free things up. Alright, so far so good there. Now I'm just going to look at these leatherettes on the front. I may have to remove my front panel before I get to the one on that side. I'm looking at the one on this side, that's very very loose. There's a, it's stuck. There's one point where it's stuck quite strongly there. Yep, it's fallen away. And you can see all this white crap here. That's corrosion. That's corrosion of the aluminium body casting. All that's going to have to be scraped off. Likewise, you can see it loose on these leatherettes. Again, that's the same stuff. And they all need to be scraped and cleaned and wiped before everything goes back. The leatherette at this end, I think, is actually tucked under the trim. So I'll leave that there for the moment. I've got to turn my attention to removing the shutter from the front here. And that, for that I'll need the appropriate tool, I think. I've I'm pretty... Oh, I've got a tool that does the Retinet 1As in later cameras. I'm not sure I've got the right tool for that. Back shortly. Yeah, the tool I had for doing the other Retinets doesn't quite fit this model. So I'm going to have to be a bit inventive about getting that retainer ring off the back of the shutter. I think these modified circlip pliers will probably be the tool of choice today. My problem is that the slot to engage the tool is right at the top and the bottom where I've got least access because there's a hump here in the casting to clear the cocking shaft through to the shutter. Let's see if I can get in with this. No, that's not budging. All right, I'm going to have to make a tool for that. I've got two problems. One is the tool's not ideally placed for getting to the ring in that position. And the other is that that ring 
has been effectively glued in place because somebody has painted it up fairly well with black paint after they've screwed it back there during a repair. And that black paint will have run into the threads and is effectively locking it up. So I'll be back when I've got something to report. Well, I was able to get that retainer ring loose. I was able to use these doctored uh, circlip pliers. And the secret to getting the ring to come loose was to apply some solvent to the ring to melt the paint that was effectively locking it in place. So that's done. With luck, the shutter should lift off now. It does. My flash contact is held with a single wire here with a screw on contact. Kodak later did away with that screw and just had a simple soldered contact there instead. So far so good. I'll lift off this front panel. I don't think, actually I don't think that one gets me where I need to be, but we'll lift that off anyway. This piece holds the shutter release connection in place and the cocking shaft for the shutter. I actually wanted to lift this piece off the camera and I think that I need to approach that in a different way. I'm just looking at that. You have two screws at the base of the camera, two at the top of the camera and the whole box should slide out of the camera I think. So, a little dob of acetone on those nasty looking uh, glued up screws I think would be handy because they tend to be hard to move even on a good day. This is not looking like a good day. Oh, that surprised me, it came loose. And it's made. That's good. And two at the top, they're loose, or well, that one was at least, and this one here. This front should lift out, the whole section should slide out now, and it does. That's good, and there's the baffle, that's most important, otherwise you end up with a, uh, a hot spot on the film. Part of the film gets... Uh, effectively overexposed from reflected light inside the camera body. I see if I can get this piece of leatherette to come off nicely. It's probably mixed, some of it's probably loose and some of it's probably stuck unreasonably well. Which of course means that they're easily broken. Yeah, it's stuck very well at just at that point, the same as at the other end of the camera. I'm going to have to find a better scalpel than that one. I don't like the look of that one. Let's try this one. I can see the leather, it's actually got a crack in it at that point. Uh, it probably means there was corrosion under there. It's swollen up that leatherette and caused it to crack. Here I can see it's it's just at this point here it's going to give me trouble. It could easily fragment there. certainly going to. Um, I don't have a 
any leatherette that looks quite like this. This is a bit unusual because of the pattern of the leatherette. You see it's got three parallel lines there. It's off. Oh, I'm amazed. That, did, that went better than I expected. Alright, so all this filth I've got to scrape off. I've got to get that casting nice and clean. I've also got to remove the leatherette from the back of the camera and uh, clear out the crap from underneath it and reapply it. There's something stuck on the back of the leatherette there or something has been stuck on the back. Could have been something sticky inside the camera case. Uh, difficult to know. I don't know what this leatherette will be like to get off. It feels a little bit brittle. And it's not exactly springing off easily Alright, this could be a slow process, I won't bore you with it, I'll show you when I've got it off. This is actually peeling off quite well. Um, the challenge is always when you get down to a corner, that popped off very well. You can see there was a great blob of corrosion right at that corner. Now, at the edges, anywhere the leatherette is reasonably sharply creased, it tends to be stuck firmly um, and it's most vulnerable to splitting at that point because it's in, very inflexible because of the shape. So that's all our leatherettes off the body. It means I can clean that body up, clean up my other mechanical components. I'm just checking the action of that back catch. All right. These can be disassembled. If they're very sticky, you have to unscrew this button. It's just got a couple of threads on the end of it, but you can unscrew that. And um, then there's two screws at the side. Take those screws out, lift that plate off. You can lift off the bracket and it's, the return spring comes out with the button. Putting them back together is a bit more entertaining. I normally use a, a pin pin vise to hold that button while I'm screwing it back in because it's it's just too short to get a grip on with your fingers and actually achieve anything useful. Right, so these parts to be cleaned and then hopefully the camera to be all reassembled and back to go.